Hey, what's up, everybody, and welcome back to News Dose. Of course, we are coming off the holiday weekend, so I hope everybody had a great time with their families, friends, or, or whomever. Hope you all had an absolutely joyous holiday. We do have some very interesting and honestly, quite frankly, strange things to go over today. I, I'll get into this in a little bit, but obviously, one major story for the entirety of 2022 has been... With Sony versus Microsoft in the ongoing Activision Blizzard acquisition. Now, I know we've heard a lot about them the last couple weeks. I do apologize about that, but we all know that Sony is playing the victim in many ways. Playing up to these regulators that there's no way that they can compete with the likes of Call of Duty. And even Xbox Game Pass. That has been one of their primary arguments. Now... I've said a hundred times that Sony's being disingenuous with these regulators. I, I don't believe what they're saying, and I don't think anybody should. But what's kind of crazy about all this is that Jim Ryan, he essentially, he confirmed that over the weekend as he contradicted one of his primary arguments to these regulators. Yeah, it, it's pretty crazy stuff. So we're going to get into that today as well as a few different leaks. Let's just go and jump right into things, though, starting off with PS3 emulation. Honestly, this is actually one of my all-time favorite consoles ever made. Now, that might surprise some people because, you know, the PlayStation 3, in many ways, will be remembered for its $600 launch price tag and just how arrogant Sony was early on. But what I mostly remember that console for is its wide variety of exclusives. I mean... It just has so many great games, whether that be you have you had Uncharted, which is still one of my favorite franchises ever made. They had Killzone, there was Resistance, Metal Gear Solid 4, which is a phenomenal game, Mod Nation Racers, Little Big Planet, and th that's also where The Last of Us started. And the list just kind of goes on and on and on. I, I feel like that they legitimately had a great library that just covered a wide variety of playstyles. But the thing about the PlayStation 3 is that to this day, their decision to use that cell processor has come back to bite them. The cell processor was infamous back then for just how difficult it was to develop for. And that, that hasn't changed even all these years later. A lot of those games are still stuck on a PlayStation 3 because Sony has yet to get true local backwards compatibility working. Now, there's rumors that they're trying with the PlayStation 5, and I, I hope that's true. I, that would just be absolutely awesome. But as of today, Sony has not given fans a great option of going back to play some of these great games. Well, the reason I'm actually talking about all this in the first place is because that's where the emulation community kind of comes in here. RPCS3, which is the PlayStation 3 PC emulator, posted this over the holiday. We are delighted to announce that as of today, the RPCS3 loadable compatibility category has reached zero games. This means that there are no PlayStation 3 games left that boot to a black screen on the emulator. Every PlayStation 3 game, at the very least, boots and shows image output. Happy holidays. And that there, that's a big achievement. I mean, if you think about it, Sony's yet to pull this off with their own hardware. But here you have the emulation community, and they've gotten every single PlayStation 3 game to at least boot up. Now, that doesn't mean every game will run flawlessly or anything like that, but that's just a part of the emulation journey. What this kind of tells me, though, is that the emulation community, once again, is playing a big part in securing game preservation. Let's go move on over to a surprising leak that hit the internet, though, and this is for Rayman 4. Yeah, the 2005 cancelled Rayman 4 project completely, yes, completely, found its way online, and if you're a fan of Rayman, this could actually be very important in the long run. Now, I believe this was first posted up on 4chan and then made its way across the internet after that, but this includes both source code and even editing tools, which... That's the part that I'm excited about. I'll come back to that here in just a second. Right now, though, fans are digging through the code. Images are being shared online. And discoveries are being made about the specifics of what this game included. Now, in typical fashion, I'm not going to include leaked images on my channel for copyright-related reasons. However, do kind of check the description below. But a few things that have been discovered thus far has been that there appears to be rideable mounts. Apparently, you can ride a giant tarantula around, as an example. And there was also a planned parody level based on Splinter Cell. I actually do like that idea. Unfortunately, though, as we all know, this game never came out, and Ubisoft instead took the franchise into a very, very different direction. Instead of Rayman 4, we ended up getting Raving Rabbits, which, I mean, to be fair, even though a lot of us prefer Rayman, my, myself included, the Rabbits IP has been very successful for Ubisoft, so I can't just sit here and say that they completely failed in the decision that they made. Sure, I might not have liked it, but... Again, Rabbids has been very successful for them. Though what I will say 
is that I think that they should have made both. I, I don't think that Rayman 4 should have ever been canceled. They could have still made Raving Rabbids and then also made this game as well. So I think it's a shame that they didn't, just as I think it's a shame we haven't gotten a mainline Rayman game since 2013 with Rayman Legends. Come on, what are you doing, Ubisoft? That, though, that, that's where this leak kind of comes in, though, because with it including both source code and, yes, the editing tools, there is a possibility that the community could take some of that work that was done on Rayman 4 and create things from it. Not only can completely new creations be made here, but there's also a possibility that somebody could actually take some of those original ideas from Rayman 4 and bring them to life. Now, now we'll see about all that, but for the time being, this was quite the holiday gift for Rayman fans. All right, so, <laughs> um, yeah, we, we all know that Sony isn't happy about the Microsoft Activision Blizzard acquisition. They've really made it their mission to make this buyout as hard as they possibly can by stirring up concern with regulators. And they've done this in a number of different ways. But two of their primary points has been about Call of Duty and their quote-unquote concern that Microsoft will make it exclusive to Xbox at some point down the line. But then one of their other key arguments has been, disregarding what happens with Call of Duty and its exclusivity, this buyout would make Xbox Game Pass too strong to compete against. In their own words, they've been telling these regulators that it would take them years to create a Game Pass competitor, and that Game Pass is significantly, significantly ahead of them. Well, that, that's really interesting, because meanwhile, PlayStation boss Jim Ryan is reportedly in a Q&A, I believe an internal Q&A, where employees ask him questions, He's reportedly saying pretty much the exact opposite. Yeah, the, the timing of this is is something special, but let, let, let's just go and check out what he had to say. So this is a report coming from Insider Gaming's Tom Henderson, which has proven time and time again to have a great, great track record. And if we take a look here, this is what it says. In response to a question about Xbox Game Pass, Jim Ryan reportedly said that when we consider Game Pass, it seems to be getting lower Game Pass numbers. When we consider Game Pass, we've sold more PlayStation 5s in two years than they have gathered subscribers, and they've been doing that for six to seven years. Ryan reportedly continued, we're just shy of 50 million subscribers, and they are in the low 20s, but there's more work to do to grow that number. Now, isn't that something? Here it seems like he's so non-concerned with Xbox Game Pass that he essentially suggests that it's not even competition to them. He suggests that we're destroying them as we're not only selling more consoles than they get subscribers, but we also have PlayStation Plus that has more subscribers than Xbox Game Pass. Now, there are some problems with this comparison here that should probably be compared to Xbox Live Gold, but suffice to say, it does kind of contradict what they've been telling regulators. I mean... Okay, so on one side, they've been telling regulators that Sony can't compete with the likes of Xbox Game Pass. But here, he's telling his employees that Microsoft can't compete with them because they're in such a dominant position, which that, that would lean into Microsoft's key argument to regulators. So which one is it, Mr. Jim Ryan? It almost seems like he's in support of Microsoft's argument. Microsoft claims that Sony is too dominant in the game industry and that this buyout will help them better compete. And I mean... Doesn't it kind of sound like Jim Ryan is pretty much suggesting that here as well? That they're dominating Xbox Game Pass so much that they're not even worried about it. <laughs> I don't know. It is just the timing of all of this that, that makes things so strange. And with how Sony has really tried to make Xbox Game Pass out like this unstoppable force to regulators, it really just kind of further makes their complaints seem even more disingenuous. Which, I mean... I've been saying that all along. This doesn't surprise me even in the slightest. But considering the question was asked in some type of internal Q&A, I believe why Jim Ryan said what he said here was to boost confidence and morale. His statement wasn't technically meant to leak out the way it did. So this is what I believe. Yes, this is a terrible, and I mean an absolutely terrible look for Sony as he just contradicted their case which is probably not something that they want to be in the public eye right now. But ultimately, I think he's being both disingenuous with his employees as well as regulators. I don't, I don't think he's being entirely truthful in either situation, which, again, that's not a good look either, but this is what I think. I, of course, think that they're being disingenuous to regulators with a lot of their concerns. But however, I, I do think it's evident by this point that they do fear 
Xbox Game Pass, and, and that's one of the reasons that they are trying so hard to stop this acquisition. Microsoft already offered them a 10-year Call of Duty contract, and the fact that they've refused to accept that tells me that Call of Duty exclusivity was never their main concern. They're simply using the popularity of that IP as an excuse to stop this bio because that's one of their best shots. But I think at least one of their main concerns is with Xbox Game Pass and that it will indeed become much stronger with all the different Activision Blizzard IP included. And in return, that will also put Xbox in a more competitive position. It threatens Sony's dominant position, which they kind of mentioned here, and it also goes against their own business model. If Xbox Game Pass continues to get more and more popular, there is a possibility that Sony would have to consider investing into their subscription services a little bit more. Now that's great for consumers, but might not necessarily be what Sony wants to do as they really want to keep that $70 business model as the only option of getting their first party content. Now, we'll, we'll see what happens from here on out, but I mean, this, this pile just, it, it keeps getting crazier. Now, hopefully we will get some more official results sometime here soon, but as always, I will keep you all updated as we get more information going forward. Now, speaking of PlayStation and their subscriptions, their PlayStation Plus January lineup just leaked out online by Bill Bill Coon. This honestly happens pretty much every single month, so this this is about as good as official by this point. But if we take a look here, we can see their PlayStation Plus Essential January lineup, which includes Star Wars Jedi Fallen Order, Fallout 76, and then also Axiom Verge 2. This is actually a pretty impressive lineup for their base tier as long as you haven't played these games already. Now that's gonna be that's gonna differ person to person, but I really do have to applaud Sony with what they've done with PlayStation Plus Essential. Even though they're including more games in the PlayStation Plus Extra now, they still frequently do offer some good games for that base service. So you have to love seeing that. Star Wars Jedi Fallen Order, though, that's obviously the big inclusion here. To a lot of fans out there, Fallen Order is among the very best Star Wars games ever made, just, just period. Especially if you like single-player content. And, and the timing of its inclusion here is likely by no accident. Its sequel, Jedi Survivor, is planned for March 17th. So this is likely their way of getting fans interested in the sequel ahead of its release, and, and it also gives them plenty of time to play it before it releases. Again, though, if you like single-player story-driven content, even if you're not a Star Wars fan, you might want to try Fallen Order. Fallout 76, though, this is another Bethesda game coming over to PlayStation Plus, which kind of shows you that these already released Bethesda games are still not off-limits for Sony subscription services. They also got Deathloop for PlayStation Plus Extra earlier this year, and now they also got Fallout 76 as well. This is the online MMO Fallout game, though, so it's not gonna be for everybody, but if you like the IP and you wanna try it out, that, that's kind of where these subscription services come in. You can test it out and see if you like it for yourself. My favorite inclusion here, though, is actually with Axiom Verge 2. Now, the reason I say that is because Axiom Verge isn't really as popular as Fallout and Star Wars, so, you know, a lot less people have probably played this game. And that's really too bad, because this is a good Metroidvania. Now, I don't know if it's quite as good as the first Axiom Verge game, but it is still an excellent Metroidvania game, all things considered, and absolutely do try this one out if you do have PlayStation Plus. Really, I think if you like the genre, there's a good chance that you'll like Axiom Verge 2. Let's go take a look at the poll of the day, though, where I asked you all, has the PlayStation 5 DualSense controller's shorter battery life been an issue for you? And as you can see here, 32% of you said yes, 22% of you said no, and then 40% of you said you don't own a PlayStation 5 or a DualSense controller. So it does seem like several of you have an issue with its shorter battery life, which is probably why there's been a little bit of pushback with their new Pro-style controller, which they confirmed has an even shorter battery life. So yeah, probably not what you really want to hear with a $200 controller. I will say for me though, I haven't personally had an issue with its battery life, but a part of that is because I did get their charging station, so every time I'm done with a game, I just set it on the charging station. Because of that, and I don't typically have super long play sessions, I've never really run into the issue of battery life actually being a problem. At the same time though, if you do have longer play sessions, I, I do completely understand that. And I have noticed a lot of the times when I I do finish a play session based on their battery life indicator, which I don't know how accurate that actually is, but it does seemingly consume a lot more than what my other controllers do. Like I don't really have to charge my Switch or Xbox controller all that often. I, I think that's kind of the benefit of being able to swap batteries though. 
So you always see people kind of go back and forth on this online, but both options are kind of a double-edged sword here. So on one side, I do like the Sony includes its own battery and you don't have to pay extra for it. It's nice and convenient. But what I think Sony should do is make it at least swappable. That way, if fans aren't happy with its battery life, they can simply go out and pay extra to get a better battery pack. I would actually like to see both Xbox and PlayStation do that where they just include a battery pack, but, you know, allow it to be swappable. That's just my opinion, though, but it does seem like several of you all would prefer a better battery life. Anyways, though, that's it for this episode, but if you liked the video, don't forget to bell notification and subscribe button for more content just like this. Also, if you'd like to support the channel through Patreon, thank you for making this content possible. Peace out.